name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Hey guys, um, been a while. I will be playing around with different ideas of what to do uh, for these videos. One of them, like I talked about, might be scenarios. Um, this week, I wanted to send a video, especially because it's Lent, because a lot of people are asking questions about judgment um, in some of the Q&As and, um, and some of the one-on-ones. So Lent's a good time to talk about that. There is a whole chapter on it that was covered last year during Lent in a series that was done on Dorotheus of Gaza. So um, I might link that in the notes or um, find a way to transfer that over to the YouTube channel. So there's a more in-depth conversation, as I guess what I want to get at, um, rooted in the Desert Fathers about dealing with judgment. But because I was thinking maybe we can just go over the grassroot levels of it because I think it's something we do a lot um, without realizing it, sometimes very much realizing it, but I think we even do it without knowing it sometimes because we're not really sure what it is that's happening. And at the same time, we're always telling people, don't judge me, et cetera, and all those things, but uh, maybe we can just um, go through it um, briefly. Now I know I can move this thing. All right. First thing is to know that um, noticing something is not the same as judging someone. So the analogy that I like to use is if I notice that somebody is in a, in a wheelchair, I haven't judged them as, as being ill or as handicapped. Um, I've noticed that they have a handicap, right? I've noticed that they have um, an inability to walk, for example. But that's different from judging, right? So being aware of an incident, being aware of, an, of a, an event is not the same as right away judging. If somebody lied in front of me, I might, have, I might know that they lied. It's different from calling somebody a liar. So judging is more of an evaluative statement um, about a person. It's saying their quality resides in this. And it also can be judgment from the prosecut prosecutorial sense or law sense of, like, here's my verdict. Right? That's probably a good all-encompassing way. Here's my verdict about the person, and often the verdict comes with a consequence, and that's why, one of the reasons my judgment is so scary. Um, and that's one of the reasons why none of, none of us can judge, because we're not really, we don't have any authority over anybody to judge anyway. Um, that's stealing from God, but that's another part of the conversation. But um, for the sake of analogy, let's go with the kind of le legal aspect, right? is that often when we fall into the sin of judging, what we've started with is a, is a prosecution, right? We start off with an accusation, and we're basically holding a person on trial, right? So basically it's like, you're a liar. Why are you calling me a liar? Well, because you lied to me, right? So there's this incident that someone lied to me, and then I've taken that, prosecuted them for their lying, found them guilty, condemned them as liar, and probably have a bunch of consequences like, I will never trust you again, um, or things like that, right? Um, and it's 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 something that we go from zero to hundred and really quickly. Usually, the the going from prosecution to judgment happens almost right away, right? Where we've just gone straight to it. Um, and so, the way to get out of that is a to even recognize that I've done it, right? Is to realize that I prosecuted someone. Step back and say, what have I just accused and judged this person for? Right? Just realize that you've even done it. And the Desert Fathers would tell us, start off by being, or at least at some point, be, be a defense lawyer for the person you're accusing, if you want to stop the judgment. is to say, I took this person to trial, I prosecuted them, but I haven't even afforded them a real defense. So act as their defense. Right? Be like, what might make me do the thing that this person did? Right, is to start looking for excuses for the person, right? Maybe, maybe it's that this person, whenever they've told the truth, um, it's not gone well. Maybe, maybe this person really believes that they're telling the truth. I haven't even, I haven't even afforded them the defense that maybe it's not even a lie. Maybe they did it because there's a severe pressure. Maybe there's something riding on it that they just don't know how to deal with. Maybe they're just in a, in a certain mood. Once you start putting yourself in the defense mode, your mood is going to start to change because you're not viewing them as this terrible aggressor anymore. 
right? Find reasons, find excuses for the other person. Um, there was a, a practice that our priest growing up gave us, but it, it wasn't for judging, but it works for judging, um, that he gave us about getting angry just in general, but um, at New Year's one year. And he said, whenever somebody does something that upsets you, give them 10 excuses right away. So that's not a bad exercise to have here. It's come up with some excuses. When you're doing the defense thing, remember that you're, the whole point here is to not put them on trial. So if you're giving them a defense, don't be so fast to tear apart your own defense. But, but it's not that because one, two, three, four, five. The whole idea here is to say, let's allow that people might not be guilty. And even if they're guilty, there might be a reason behind it that I don't understand that might change how I view the person. Right, because the judgment is, is part of my viewing of the person. To go even deeper spiritually would be to self prosecute. Is to say, where am I wrong in this scenario, or where have I done this very wrong thing? What if the person is lying to me because I'm so condescending and arrogant that they're afraid to tell me the truth, or I'm so quick to anger that they're scared of my reaction if they tell me the actual truth? Maybe it's because I've been so opinionated all the time that people are afraid to be honest around me, right? Those are all ways that I might have even caused the situation. But let's say I didn't cause it. What are times where I have lied? We've all lied, right? I've, I, I know that I have lied in my life, right? It's to say, why am I holding this person on trial for lying when that's something that I, I do all the time and I'm not in jail for it? So why am I trying to send somebody else to jail for what they do wrong? If I can start to view me as also just equally guilty, I will run from judgment because I would hate for people to judge me the way that I'm judging other people for the very same things, right? So self-prosecution, um, it's, a, it's a real thing. That's from like a legal, a legalist perspective, right? Um, because then the end result is that hopefully I'll drop the charges. Right? Now, forgiveness and non-judgment is not really an optional thing. These are just tips about how to do it in the sense of we can't judge. Right? I'm not the judge. It's not my seat to judge. I don't know anybody's full situation. I don't know why they did it. And righteousness is not legally owed to me. People doing the right thing isn't really fully owed to me. It is on a secondary level in the sense of that we've become family through Christ. But righteousness is first and foremost owed to God. Right? So people don't owe me being right. On some level, in terms of the gospel, we do. But I'm just saying that only because of God does that become true. But the person who can demand the account, it's not me, right? The person who can demand the account is one to whom it's owed, right? And that's not owed to me. That's from like a legal perspective. If I take it from a disease perspective of sin, is imagine if I'm really angry that somebody is talking to me in a particular way. And I feel that they're getting obnoxious, they're getting arrogant, they're loud, they're rude, they're putting me down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I might rightfully be really, really, really upset at first. Let's say I found out that they lost both parents in a car accident the week before and they didn't want to say it. Suddenly I might have compassion even if the behaviors were wrong. Trying to say is that knowledge can change things, right? So in this defense thing is that there's, there's something that could be happening. But to go to a disease model is to say diseases have symptoms. Sin is a disease, right? So maybe I have a disease whose symptoms are lying and a person has a, a disease whose symptoms are arrogance and a person has a disease whose symptoms are whatever. We don't usually get mad at people for being ill. We usually have compassion on them and hope for their healing, so if I can view sin properly in, in one light as being a form of disease, maybe I will stop judging people for being ill and have compassion on them for their symptoms. So if, for example, I, if a person who takes steroids, um, steroids over a long period of time can cause like real irritability, right? So if somebody is on steroids, I'm like, oh, I might have compassion when they're angry being like, they must be on steroids. And they're on steroids because they're ill, right? Is that suddenly this different change of mindset views things differently. But we can't be quick to judge, right? Is that we're stealing from the throne of God 
his rights. And I don't mean rights just in terms of God gets to judge, as though God likes to judge. I just mean that in terms of making things right, which is what we're usually looking for when we're judging. We're usually looking for something that we feel wronged and we want someone to make the situation right again. So it's not all just motivated by evil. It's just saying that I'm not the one who can make it right. The only one who can make it right is one who really gets it, who knows it, who knows all, who knows everyone's circumstances that can really evaluate the whole thing. The only person who really can do that is God. He is the only one who's omniscient, who really knows everyone, what they're going through, what affected them, what made them say it, um, what are the circumstances surrounding each person involved, what would be a really heavy-handed way to deal with it versus uh, a more reasonable for the person. That, we, we don't have that, right? So by surrendering it back to the hands of God, you're going to get a much better justice because you're now in the hands of God who, who, who carries the scales of the world and who loves you infinitely. Right? If you're truly wronged, he, he will know how to make that right for you. Right? And if a person wronged you, he also knows how to deal with them and what their circumstances are. Right? How many of us, for example, just to, to emphasize the being fair to them part, right? is how many of us wish that when we've done something wrong, people would realize what we're going through? I was saying, but you, just, you don't appreciate what I'm going through. God, God can and when we take away from ourselves this judgment, Christ promises something very beautiful. He says, I won't judge you. There's a famous story from the Desert Fathers of this monk who on his deathbed, the monks are gathered around and they want to get these words of life from him before he goes. They think that this is going to be his deepest. He knows he's going. What, are, what, is, what is this monk going to tell us? He said, Abuna, like, and they asked him, Abuna, what, what are your feelings? Are you afraid? And he goes, no. I'm like, what does he mean he's not afraid? Like, you're not afraid? He's like, no, I'm not afraid because I've never judged. Not, before he said, I never judged. He goes, because I'm going to heaven. And they're like, Abuna be kharaf. Abuna's lost it. Abuna's like gone senile. And there's Petra, I'm like, don't say that. Abuna, don't say that. You're on the way out. And he goes, no, I'm, I know that. I know I'm going because God promised, judge not, and I will not be judged. I have made it a point to never judge any man. And I have confidence in God that he will not judge me. That's how powerful it is to even just live that one virtue. Um, of course, there's also the very famous story of St. Moses the Strong that I think we can learn from of when we recognize the self-prosecution part, the stuff that I do, it makes it harder for me to judge others. There's the famous story of St. Moses when they wanted to have the monks come together um, to draw judgment on a monk who messed up. And so they all get together um, to have this synaxis, to have this meeting. And they're summoning all the monks to come. They see Abuna Moses, St. Moses doing a very peculiar thing, that he's walking around with this bag of sand on his back with a hole in it. And wherever he goes, there's a trail of sand going. And I asked him, what is the meaning of this? And he said, Those, the sand is like my sins. I'm walking towards my brother to judge him. And there's this stream behind me of my own sins that I don't see and I don't look at. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Um, may God grant us to not judge one another, to care for one another, to cover one another, which is to be like God. And to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Um, I will be doing some of these scenario things, like of you guys sending in your scenarios or things you might want to discuss and dissect. Um, thanks for all the churches I've seen so far. There is a handful, uh, not even a handful, left. But uh, coming soon, uh, and Lent schedule, or Holy Week schedule will be out soon as well. But uh, keep me in your prayers, and miss you all. Good night.